Hey guys, and welcome back to part two of the XSE Pokemon script tutorials. Um, this one's going to jump right into some basic scripting, and I mean very basic. This is the message um, script, pretty much. Um, so yeah, if you guys watched the uh, first one, it got into the tools. Now we're actually going to start getting into the actual uh, programming. Um, so let's go ahead and jump in. What we'll be using is XSE, so if you want to go ahead and pop that open, um, and we'll go ahead and start. So, what you want to do is um, make sure that this is 1.1.1. Um, I mentioned that in the other video, but that's actually a good thing because this actually has um, very nice little um, um, editors on it that are basically like little command bubbles that show you what you're doing and um, like this one right here so it tells you what you're doing and what you need to do next so it's very helpful and it's not in 1.0 so I would definitely get 1.1.1 um, of XSE um, this is also uh, changed in font to um, a different font than uh, New Courier um, I've also changed the background the black and the foreground text to white so if you guys are wondering why it looks different all right, so um, when we start a uh, XSA script, we start it with dynamic. Um, it's always started with that. Um, that's just how it starts. Um, the next thing you have to put is the offset. The offset is what you point the script to. Um, if you remember in the previous video, I said there's extra memory in the game, but you haven't used it yet. It's just there. So what we're doing is we're pointing the script to the extra memory. Not all of it, just a portion of it to actually put it in the game. So for just basic reasons we just started off with 8,000 or 800,000 and this is available but if you just basically make up a script you can do it with this you can b put whatever you want to there you'll change it whenever free space finder finds the correct offset for you to use but we'll just use this this one for their um, the examples so um, the next thing you want to type for just a basic message is um, you always start it off with um, hashtag or binary as some say um, then you go to org now what org is is basically um, saying that this is a new area to register within the script um, it's basically um, telling you that this is one of the roads that you need to follow because it's just gonna go um, from here down reading it um, line through line word through word and when it hits this, it realize or when it hits a, a, um, an offset, it'll look for the next one. So it's just the way you start these. Um, the next one's very important. It's actually um, you start with an at symbol, and then or in PokeScript it was a uh, money sign or cash symbol. Um, but this is an at sign, and we I usually just say start. You can put whatever you want to here. Just don't put spaces. Um, but you can pretty much put whatever you want to. You can put script if you want to put script. Um, if you want to put, you know, test, whatever you feel like putting. I just put start because this is where it starts. The next thing that you want to do is actually lock. And what lock does is whenever you actually talk to the player or talk to the, um, not the player, but the actual NPC that you're talking to, uh, whoever it may be, lock makes them, makes the world around you stop nobody's turning their heads running back and forth it's stopped the game is stopped for you to talk to that person um, the next one you want to do is space player so let's say they're turning around left and right or maybe they're running back and forth um, face player makes them um, face you pretty much you know obvious um, but it does and it'll face you on each direction that you actually walk around so that way if they're just looking around and you talk to them without this they keep looking around while you're talking to them. It's very unprofessional. Um, so we just put lock face player. The next one we want to put is pretty much the message. So what we'll do is we'll put um, MSG box. Um, that's pretty much shorthand, but that's how you do it. Um, then the next, notice the, like the uh, little indicator right here. It actually says point to a load in the memory or pointer to load in the memory. Um, what it's asking is where do we pull up this talk? Where, when it's doing the message, where is the message? 
So we want to point it to something. You can also name this whatever you want to. I normally name messages talk, talk one, talk two, talk three, as many as I need. So talk one. The next one's the message type. Now there's about six different types. Um, they all start off with six zero, and then they go from uh, zero one two three um, four five and six. Now the main ones that we use is four five and six, um, not together obviously. But um, four is actually for um, a more secure reason, and we'll use it during fade screens, which I'll show later. Um, five is a question for yes or no, and six is just your basic talking box, um, nothing special. So we'll use six for right now. After that, you're pretty much done. You're actually going to link it to the message, and then after they talk, you're done. So we're going to head and go ahead and hit release, if I can spell right, and then you hit end. So what it's saying is release. Notice you remember that we locked it up here. Well, now it's going to release us. Otherwise, we're stuck forever. Nothing's going to happen. It's over. And then end it. The script doesn't keep going, and we don't get stuck in an infinite loop and eventually crash. So we have to always end it. Release and end it, um, whether or not you have lock or not. But it always has to have end. The next one that we're going to do is hit space twice, and we're going to do the hashtag or binary. We're going to put org. Like I said, it's just how these things start. The next one is the offset. So what we're doing is we're telling it the talk one. All right, so it's saying starts it, locks the player, face the player, message box, refer to talk one in just a normal box. So it's, so as soon as it hits right here, it goes straight down here. And it goes, all right, this is where talk one is. Let me see what information is inside here. So if you hit control T, you can actually start typing up your message. So we'll go, hey there. And if you hit enter once, you actually provide another line in the same box. And I'll show you what that is. So, hey there, how are you? All right, instead of hitting again and making the box keep scrolling, we're actually going to go to a new box. So you hit enter twice. Now it's um, going to be a new box, and we're going to go, what's your name? And then we're going to hit enter twice, so it goes to a new box. And then this is how to set the player name, and this works for other commands as well. Um, if you actually had to set it for a give Pokemon or anything like that, it's um, forward slash v forward slash, or um, I think that's forward slash, and then h01. And then we're going to put a question mark. Now the question mark's not necessary to show the player. This right here would show the player. If his name was Bob, it's Bob. Um, that's it. But we're going to put a question mark after it. So he's asking, did I get that right? Is your name Bob? And then we're actually going to go to not a new paragraph. We're just going to go underneath it. And we're going to say, that's a cool name. And that's it. And we're going to hit convert and insert. And what we did here was basically we said, hey there, how are you? And this is actually in one box. Hit enter twice, it goes to a new paragraph. Notice that they're separated with P's. Then it says, what's your name? No second line, it goes to a new box. And then this one says your name, and then it goes to an, a line underneath it. So it's not a new box, it's it's on the same same paragraph. Um, that's a cool name. So we can go ahead and hit exit. It looks right, everything's good. Now we can do the next thing, which is debug. Debug is a fake compile, so it actually shows that there are problems, and then you can fix them before you actually hit the two gear symbol, which is to compile it. So what we do is we go to debug, it says everything's good. If it wasn't, it would definitely tell you. You wouldn't get this screen if it wasn't good. Now what you want to do is actually, um, you'll want to have your ROM open, which is something I didn't do. Um, to do that, simply open go to file open find your rom i have a fresh one picked from the infinite supply of uh uncorrupted roms and we're going to grab fire red this is a brand new fire red and what you would do is you would pretty much open that from the get go and then type your script i actually forgot so what we're going to do is just or in my case i'm going to copy it and then i'm going to paste it 
same thing, same everything. It's just within the ROM now. Notice the gear symbol actually is activated. It went from being gray to blue. Um, you can debug it again if you feel, you know, cautious, and then we can actually do it. So what we do in any uh, other case, which if it's a fresh ROM, then this is actually going to be available. But I'm going to show you guys what you'd be doing otherwise. Free Space Finder. Now, this program exe has to be in the same folder as the xse in order for it to pull it up like this. You'll get a faded gray little line that shows Free Space Finder and you can't click it. It's because it's not in the folder. It doesn't know where it's at. Um, so what you do is open up the ROM. If we can find it. Open it. And now you want to leave this as FF. FF says basically this is hex. Um, and then this is actually decimal. So you want to actually just leave it under hex. Your bytes are kind of weird. For a message, you're probably going to need 50. But my rule of thumb is pretty much leave it at 250 to 300. So for right now, we're going to leave it at 250. Um, and then the next one is search interval. And what you want to do is set that to 16. Not sure what the big difference is between 1 and 16. I get the same results. So, But a lot of people have it at 16. And that's coming from professional tutorials on uh, forum websites so we're gonna leave it at 16 for now and you can go ahead and search now notice you'll get a 71 whatever is followed by that but 71 is actually within the game it's actually free space that's actually between probably two codes and um, it's kinda sketchy to play with it right there because you're basically trying to squeeze something right in and pray that it works so we're not going to be doing any of that. We're going to play it safe and go by the 8,000, 800,000. And we're going to search, and it brings up 800,000. Like I said, for the first script of your game, you can leave it like this. But um, So we're actually not going to do anything with um, Free Space Finder on this tutorial. So we're going to use 8,000, and we're going to run with it. So we're going to hit Compile. And now what you have down here is pretty much what's being called upon. You want to always go with the start and copy it. You can exit. Now we can open up advanced map. So we go to open our ROM. Scroll down to our ROM. Open it. Give it a second. Go to header. Look at all the maps. Um, basically the towns and routes are actually on three. We're going to go to pallet town. And we're going to go to events. Now we actually have our three events that are currently running. Um, if you scroll up, you actually have three going on. So there's three events going on. Um, what we're going to do is go down to amount of events. We're going to change the person events to four. Change it. We're going to grab this guy right here and drag him down. We're going to scroll up. And we're going to change his appearance a little bit so he doesn't look just like us. We're going to make him this guy right here. Okay, and then we're actually going to make him look around a little bit to show the lock player. And then this is where you're going to put all the offsets that you make. So that 800,000 that you actually copied, you're going to paste it right here. And then you're going to open the script just to test it, make sure nothing's crazy. Trust me, you'll always want to do this because I've had crazy commands just come right in. It's basically saying that, yeah, there's a bug with whatever you just typed up. So this looks exactly like what we typed in. We will um, minimize it. And that's pretty much all you have to do for this. So what we'll do is we'll go to save. We'll minimize advanced map, free space finder. We'll double click into uh, fire red. And we will go ahead and play the game real quick. And I will definitely remember to set some temporary uh, saves so that way we don't have to do this every time. So we're going to make it something unique for his name. Um, um, we're going to name him Goody. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and start this. We're going to run outside. Alright, and notice that he's standing here, he's looking around, and watch what happens when we talk to him. He locks onto us, and he doesn't move. He says, hey, how there, how, hey there, 
how are you? And then he actually kept it on the same paragraph. The new one actually jumps into a new paragraph, and then he jumps into another. And then it says your name with a question mark, and then it actually says, um, that's a cool name. And so that kind of gives you an idea of the dividers when it comes to talking. But that's pretty much it. So we'll go ahead and um, save this so I don't have to look at it later or run through the beginning again. And that's pretty much it. So that was a basic script um, for talking and how to implement it into the ROM. Um, the next tutorial will probably do give a item or Pokemon, and uh, we'll just keep going from here. So uh, anyways, comment, rate, and subscribe, and I'll talk to you guys later.